I'd like to start with a miracle. But since I'm not uh, at the level where I can instantaneously manifest them, I would instead invite you to envision a miraculous situation. So please just imagine that at the snap of my fingers, there's a worldwide wave of illumination through which every person on earth becomes fully aware of all the relevant facts about genetically engineered foods. And everybody's opinion about them becomes fully aligned with our best scientific knowledge. What do you think would happen? Well, if we adhere to the uh, routine rhetoric of the proponents of these products, we would have to predict that such a global wave of enlightenment would cause all opposition to them to vanish. Because in the rendition of reality that they propound, all of the opposition is based on ignorance of the facts and in, based on irrational, unscientific fears. But in the world we actually inhabit, such a universal wave of enlightenment would not cause the opposition to the foods to vanish. What would vanish would be the foods themselves. That's right. If people actually understood all of the facts about genetically engineered food, and if their opinions became aligned with sound science, solid science, then this whole massive venture to reconfigure the genetic core of the world's food supply would collapse quite quickly. And that is why, despite their pretensions to want to educate the public about the facts, the proponents of these products, whether in industry or in scientific institutions or major universities, go out of their way to suppress the facts and to distort the facts and to keep the public in the dark about them. And they've been very successful about the, uh, in doing that. Now, during the next 50 minutes or so, I am going to be uh, sharing with you extensive information that will help clear up many of the key distortions, many of the key uh, deceptions that have been propagated in the name of science and uh, it will allow you to gain a firmer understanding, clear up a lot of the confusion. And by the end of the presentation, you will see that there, uh, there are at least five basic evidence-supported conclusions that can be reached. So one is that producing new foods through recombinant DNA technology, which is genetic engineering, is an inherently risky process. Second, that every genetically engineered food poses an, ab an abnormal level of risk. Three, the safety of those on the market has never been adequately established. And four, some of them have already been shown to be harmful. That's very important. And last, not only has the GE food venture been shown to be harmful, I'm sorry, been not only has the GE food venture, I skipped up to the above line, has the GE food venture been violating the standards of science, it has been damaging science and has injured it far more severely than has the campaign to deny global warming. Now, of course, any advocates of genetic engineering who heard me recite these assertions would by now be livid. In fact, they'd probably be standing up and screaming. And the fact that nobody's standing up and screaming, I think, implies that none of you are strong advocates of, G of GMOs. And that fifth assertion would especially rouse their ire because they claim that genetic, the genetic engineering venture is solidly aligned with science and that anybody who opposes it is in essence anti-science. And they claim that 
In fact, the opposition to genetically engineered foods is on a par with the campaign to deny climate science, to deny climate change. And they classify opposition to GMOs as along with the campaign to deny global warming as a key component in a major war that's being waged against science.